Today I'm reporting from the most elaborate escape room in New York City, my apartment. It's become abundantly clear that I'm going to get the key as soon as we're testing Americans so much finals week feels like spring break. The tricky part is, how do you accomplish that? Now this is particularly frustrating to me because there are so many news reports on testing, but they all tend to just hope you don't ask the question. Alright, you convinced me we need more tests. How are we going to make them? Now there are two solutions that have emerged to this problem, a liberal solution and a conservative solution. And as you've probably guessed, it's like comparing apples and quantum mechanics. Just two completely different thought processes. Now I want to start with the liberal position because, well, it's really weird considering current power dynamics. Democrats want to see the federal government lead the push to manufacture just a ton of tests. One problem, there isn't a Democrat in the Oval Office. Now this is why you see the House of Representative bills making a ton of funding available for the executive branch to spend on making tests. You know, Trump, if you've ever wanted to start actively doing something, here's a little something for your time. Now this has led to very odd declarations like Washington State Senator Patty Murray speaking about a recent appropriations bill. She said, what we have to say to the administration is, you need to show us how you are going to get the production that we need to have rapid tests readily available in every community. I would expect they would have to use this act to get there, but if they have another way to get there, show us. Show us it's real. Hey, maybe Trump will hit this one out of the park. I mean, he has given himself a 10 out of 10 so far in its pandemic response. Of course, the state of the federal government right now might be the best argument for liberals as to why they should consider a state by state solution. Still, he's the head honcho, so if you want a federal response, you're going to need to keep handing him money and hope he bites. The most recent funding allocation was in the small business loan bill that was just passed. $25 billion is going to go to testing, and $11 billion of that piece will go directly to the states. The remainder will go toward agencies and other outlets that are working on developing these tests. All right, so $14 billion specifically earmarked for spending on tests, if Trump and the Department of Health and Human Services choose to use it. Now, this brings us to the conservative plan to regulate testing. Let's let private industry figure it out. Now, the conservative mentality is best exemplified by Republican Senator and Chair of the Senate Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee, wow, he must be a busy guy, Lamar Alexander. He recently said, We've appropriated the dollars. The issue is the government's not usually really good at fast production of anything. We need to create an environment where somebody outside the government can make the scientific discoveries and then turn them into tens of millions and eventually hundreds of millions of tests. Testing manufacturers are of course ramping up production, considering that the hot summer items for this year are some strappy flip flops, some gold rimmed aviators, and a functional COVID-19 test. Anyone who's anyone has one. This of course brings liberals to the opposite of Sophie's choice. Would you prefer Donald Trump or Big Pharma handling this testing problem? It's a great time to be mass manufacturing tests though, a business choice that can best be exemplified by Abbott Labs. Abbott Labs is worth every bit as much yesterday as today as Monday. And if you had to start buying a position of all the stocks I've heard today, it would be Abbott Labs ABT. Rock on, brother. Abbott Labs is going all in on making a boatload of these tests without a federal government mandate. They plan to make and distribute over 20 million tests per month starting in June through a partnership with CVS. Forget hospitals, you can pick up your medical tests right next to the beef jerky. Now they're also making a ton of tests that they're selling directly to frontline health workers. Although, emphasis on the word selling. Because of the huge demand for the best, fastest, and cheapest tests, these things are being innovated on faster than iPhones. Mine can diagnose someone in five minutes. 
Oh yeah, well mine can be administered from home, so I can take the test while I'm on the can. No, it's not as though America has entirely privatized its testing response. This testing response has been brought to you by Corona Especial. Find your beach. While this is the primary federal health strategy, I have to mention Kushner's actively focusing on increasing public-private partnerships. Specifically, the Trump administration's push to make a drive-through testing program succeed. Now that might sound like an incredibly specific solution, especially because is it socially acceptable to walk through a drive-through test? The goal here is to standardize every part of the test though and create hubs at the mass market drugstores existing in pretty much every community across America to administer those tests. You get Abbott Labs to make the tests, drugstores to administer them, and Kingfisher Labs to process them. Bada bing bada boom, a simple supply chain that can be replicated across the country. I'm still hearing a lot of private though and not a lot of public. So what's the government's kick in in all this plan? Well, This is where pretty much all of the reporting stops, leading me to have to use a supermarket news as a source. Yeah, I really went down a multi-hour rabbit hole on this one. The public part of this program is the Department of Health and Human Services places orders on the open market for tests through Abbott Labs sends those tests to drugstores for the drugstore practitioners to administer those tests, and then contracts out processing those tests to different private labs. Public-private partnership. This supply chain was confirmed by an HHS announcement that they were purchasing Abbott Labs tests for the drive through program, and test resupplies would be available. You know, in case you don't trust the fine people over at Supermarket News with all of your public policy reporting. So how different is that from the liberal idea? I mean, it sounds like the government isn't exactly skimping on purchases. Well, it really comes down to two words. Health and Human Services is purchasing tests on the open market. Now, This is how you have headlines from last week saying that Italy picks US firm Abbott Laboratories to supply coronavirus test kits. Now, This has some liberals scratching their head and saying, you know, a touch of America first just around the edges might not be a bad thing. Similarly, the federal government is competing against private labs and rich individuals for tests. Now, This is how NBA players and even dogs are getting tested, while well, my friend who eventually tested positive had to make several trips to military protected facilities in Queens to get a darn swab shoved up her nose. Now this is quite the cute papa though, so I see where you're coming from. I know you've probably heard it quite a few times at this point, but liberals are pushing for the federal government to use the Defense Production Act, which allows the government to force companies to prioritize orders from certain entities. Essentially, this would be Trump saying to Abbott Labs, hey, congratulations on that Italy order. Here's an American order for those tests. Do it first. Oh, you did that order? Thanks. Here's another order. Do it first. Rinse and repeat until the government has all of the tests it needs and things return to normal. Despite these problems, there is room for hope. In the past, the biggest problem when trying to increase the number of sites was the availability of testing equipment and capacity of the labs to process the tests. With Abbott Labs cranking these things out like their bottom lines depend on it, there is some room for optimism. There are now 87 sites up and running. Companies have paired together with test providers and labs to process those tests. Many supply chain shortages have either been fixed or at least significantly improved. And the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have also expanded their guidelines for who can get tested. Increasingly, anybody who wants a test truly can get one. Still, let's not strain our arms overzealously trying to pat ourselves on the back quite yet. We're seeing some that's a good start numbers. 2 million tests a month at over a thousand locations across 49 states in Puerto Rico. Not sure which state didn't get the invite, but unfortunately that still is about a tenth of the tests that are required for a nationwide opening. 
That's why, on top of this program, you're still hearing about states competing with one another on the open market, as well as the federal government and Italy for tests, and also importing tests internationally. So that's how testing is going right now. Sorry this episode took so long to produce, but oh my gosh did it get really complicated there at the end. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, first I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you liked what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.